All right, Nick, let's talk about the New Orleans Saints here for a second. And the story we're going to talk about today is kind of about the future and the value that is in the Saints organization. Maybe a little bit of hidden value, things that people don't see as value. But we have a story getting all that in just a moment. But Saints fans, I know, disappointing season, didn't make the playoffs. But there are a lot of other teams in the playoffs. Maybe some teams you don't want to see make it. Maybe some teams you do want to see make it to the end. So once you take a step back and look at the field, I want you to let us know in the comments below who is your ideal Super Bowl matchup of the teams left in the playoffs at this point. Let us know in the comments below what's your ideal Super Bowl matchup. But Nick, what do you have on this hidden value for the Saints? Yeah, so right now, one of the things going on in football, and, and everyone's aware of it, right, is the coaching carousel. Everyone who's fired their head coach is looking for, obviously, a replacement, whether it's getting a young coordinator or a former head coach to come in and fill the ranks. We're seeing Carolina, we're seeing Denver, now the Chargers after blowing that huge lead. A lot of people think they may fire their head coach and move on. And, of course, the name that's been linked to potentially every head coaching job available right now is Sean Payton, the former New Orleans Saints head coach. And there's all the conversation about, you know, hey, where's Sean Payton going to go? Denver, Carolina, L.A., you know, what's going to work there? How's that going to work out? The reality is the value there for Peyton actually lies with the New Orleans Saints. And ESPN had a really good interview with Mickey Loomis about that. And I want to read something of what, uh, what Loomis said here uh, about Sean Payton, the situation. He says, but I also recognize that he, talking about Sean Payton here, is a valuable asset. His contract is a valuable asset to our club. Those words are important, asset. And it's our duty to maximize that. Look, I think between the quarterback or a head coach, no one impacts winning more than those two guys in any building. So I know what he brings to the table, and I know that's really valuable. And it's our obligation to maximize that value if he chooses to coach again within that time frame where we have those rights. So what that means for Mickey Loomis's mind is that anyone who wants Sean Payton, you better write a big check to New Orleans. And everyone understands that a lot of people are willing to write that check. And right now, Loomis and New Orleans are sitting very pretty because I think they could get a massive haul uh, for allowing Sean Payton to move away from that organization and coach somewhere else. And But give me your thoughts on Loomis, the Saints, and everything the Saints could possibly do here uh, trading Sean Payton, essentially. Yeah, Nick, I think the uh, proverbial check being cash as in draft picks and trade value in Sean Payton is really just something people don't think about a lot because we don't think about coaches getting traded very, very often. You can think in recent memory, one of the big ones we remember is John Gruden getting traded, and that trade got a huge haul, uh, two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and it paying $8 million in his remaining salary off the books. So that that's a pretty big trade, and I think there's some really great value in a guy, a veteran uh, head coach that is as good as Sean Payton. And I kind of want to go down, Nick, uh, over on Saints Wire. They had like three mock trades here, uh, one to the Broncos, one to the Texans, and one to the Cardinals, of uh, potential value for Sean Payton. And let's go through these, and I'm going to kind of give you a second after each one to tell me what you think about it. So the first up is the Broncos. So the Broncos would be getting just Sean Payton. The Saints get... 2023 first round pick, a 2023 third round pick, and a 2024 second round pick. What do you think about that, Nick? Yeah, I think that's sort of the baseline, right? I think that's a, obviously it's a good trade getting a first, a second, and a third. I think the Saints could maybe get a little bit more, but I think that's probably the bar. That's kind of the floor to what any team would have to give up to give Peyton, which I think if that's what you get, if that's the best offer you get, you obviously take it if you're the Saints, but I think they could potentially get a little bit more from one of the other clubs. Yeah, and that being, that was the the Broncos uh, 2023 first round pick number 29 pick. So, uh, yeah, let's go next to the Texans. Texans get Sean Payton. They trade their first round pick, which is the number 12 overall pick quite a jump in first round picks, 2023 fourth round pick, and then a 2024 fourth round pick. This is probably one of the higher, uh, first round picks that's on the table for Sean Payton. What do you think about that? Yeah, obviously, I think it's a lot better. And one of the things to remember about the Saints is that their cap situation isn't ideal. You know, they owe 57 million bucks in the cap right now, according to over the cap, which just means they're going to have to restructure a lot of veterans and maybe cut some guys, maybe extend some deals. What does that mean? It means you need to bring in some talented young rookies. They already got some of them and a guy like Olave. So getting a high first round pick there with some other guys in the middle of the draft is important because then they can move and get some of these young guys in the roster right away. That's why I think a trade like that is probably a really good deal for New Orleans. Now, this next trade, Nick, is probably the most intriguing out of the three because it's with the Arizona Cardinals, and there's a lot of unknowns going into the Cardinals season next year, but let's get into it. The Cardinals would be getting proposed that they get Sean Payton and a 2023 fourth-round pick from the Saints. The Saints would be receiving 
the Cardinals' 2023 second-round pick, which is number 34 overall pick. So that's almost a first-round pick, very high second-round pick. The 2023 fourth-round pick, and then their 2024 first-round pick, which is very intriguing to me, Nick, because the Cardinals are kind of going through it. They've fired their head coach. They're in turmoil. DeAndre Hopkins is on the traded block. You don't know exactly how potentially high that 2024 first-round pick could be, Nick. Yeah, that's definitely the riskier of the trades. You know, obviously, they could be the, if the Cardinals stink in, in uh, next year the way they did this past year. That could be obviously a top five pick, which could be a huge victory for New Orleans. But the one problem is we all know Sean Payton's a pretty good coach. If he goes to Arizona hypothetically and turns it around and they become a playoff team, suddenly that first round pick gets a lot worse, right? So kind of it's all about your uh, risk reward profile. I think the trade to Arizona, hey, a lot of risk, but a lot of reward depending on how it works out with Arizona. Uh, but I think that some of the other deals make a lot more sense and kind of safer package there. Yeah, so I think just at the end of the day, you know, the Broncos, potentially that proposed trade would be, you know, eh. the Texans would be probably your safest, highest value pick, uh, the most guaranteed type stuff. But the Cardinals is potentially the riskiest, but has the biggest reward. So just going forward, I think this, the main point of today's video was just kind of highlight how much value that Sean Payton has and just how the, the Saints should view him as an asset and something that will help build this team. I love the point that you make about the ability to get these draft picks in to get young, talented players in so they can kind of move on from a little of these older players to relieve some of this cap space because you can't be in the cap situation the Saints have been in for so long. It's really bad for the organization moving forward. So to be able to move off that and get some really, really good draft capital moving forward, that can't not be uh, overstated enough that that is super important.